you know regarding a coronavirus, the original coronavirus that is causing the COVID-19 pandemic has since mutated several times, raising some what they call variants of concern, the alpha, the beta, the gamma. And now we've got the Delta variant that is of concern around the world. Now, what is it? Well, the Delta variant was designated this code, B16172. It was first identified in India in December 2020, but has now been reported in over 104 countries around the world, and that is according to the CDC. In several countries, it has now been recorded as the dominant strain. In the United Kingdom, the Delta variant now accounting for more than 97% of the new cases, and it is also the dominant strain in countries such as the United States and Germany. Now, in Africa, deaths in increased by 89% in the month of July this year. The WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom says that the worsening death toll and rapid infection rates are being driven by the Delta variant. Well, in Kenya, it was first identified in Kisumu in May this year in factory workers who'd arrived from India. Since then, the Kenya Medical Research Institute has been conducting gene sequencing on some of the samples collected in the country. Now, between the 16th of April and the 17th of July this year, scientists at Kemri sequenced about 116 samples from seven counties in Kenya. That's Kilifi, Lamu, Tana River, Taita Taveta, Mombasa, Nairobi, and Laikipia. The samples included the three variants of concern that we mentioned. That's the Alpha, the one first identified in the UK, Beta, the one first identified in South Africa, and the Delta variant. But here is the important point according to the official response I received from Kemri. Their findings are that the Delta variant is now the major variant circulating in Kenya right now, followed by Alpha, and then beta. But so what are the symptoms of this Delta variant? Are they similar to those of the original coronavirus? Well, they say they are. That's persistent cough, headaches, fever, and sore throat. Although in some countries, symptoms such as loss of sense of smell and cough have been recorded as being less common. Now, the Delta variant is causing concern around the world, as you know, for three main reasons. One, higher transmissibility, Two, higher severity of the disease and escape from vaccines. Now, I want to show you this graphic because it explains a little bit of what we're going to talk about. Now, it achieves this because it has various mutations on the spike proteins on the surface of the virus. And these make it harder for antibodies, that is your body's fighter cells, to attach to the virus and destroy it. Now, unlike the alpha, beta and gamma, the Delta variant is more likely to bypass the immune system. Those mutations on the spike protein also make the Delta variant easier to latch onto the human cells and therefore easier to invade them and infect you. And this is what causes the higher transmissibility. Now, the Delta is reportedly 40 to 60 percent more transmissible than the Alpha variant. And remember, the Alpha variant is itself more than 40 percent more transmissible than the original coronavirus that was reported in Wuhan, China. So that should help to give you some more perspective on exactly what we're dealing with at this moment. Now, another issue of concern is that the Delta variant has a higher viral load, which is estimated to be up to 1,000 times higher than the other variants. So that means when you get infected with the Delta variant, you get a higher amount or numbers of the virus all at once. This means the incubation period from the time of exposure to the time you exhibit symptoms is much shorter. The symptoms develop faster. The chances of getting serious infection is higher. That higher viral load also means that those who are infected shed more virus particles too and are highly infectious. In fact, some scientists at Kemri tell me that it is now as highly infectious as chickenpox. Now, data is not conclusive, but what is being seen now is that hospitalization rates are higher with the Delta variant. Now, various studies have shown, you know, the interaction between them and the vaccines is that the vaccines in the market have a slightly lower efficacy against the Delta variant by a few percentage points compared to the other variants. But there is still more than 50 percent efficacy, as you can see here. All right. Now, remember, this is all very new and the research on the coronavirus, the newly developed vaccines is still ongoing. But what is important to note is this, is that data from the U.S. where the Delta variant is dominant right now shows that of those dying 
at this moment in the US, 99% were not vaccinated. So that means that ultimately, one is better vaccinated than not. Experts continue to urge vaccination as an important tool in the fight against the virus. A lower efficacy rate, even for the Delta variant, as is shown here, still offers some protection against severe disease, hospitalization, and ultimately death. And it's better than having no vaccine at all. But vaccinated persons can also still transmit the virus. And because our vaccination rates are much lower than in other countries around the world, and due to the fact that vaccination does not prevent one from contracting the virus, but rather helps one better fight the disease if they contract it, vaccination coupled with continued adherence to the protocols like masking, hand washing and physical distance are still very important to protect the majority of the population who are yet to get vaccinated. That is all you need to know about the Delta variant that has now been uh, determined to be the dominant variant in the country, highly transmissible, causing a higher severity of disease. That's our explainer tonight on where we are with COVID-19 and the Delta variant in the country.